How's it going, YouTube? We are back. This time, we're going to be starting a new series called Fighter Spotlight. Um, totally not an original idea or whatever, but uh, Fighter Spotlight for me, um, highlighting a fighter that I really, really enjoy in boxing. For me, it's going to be, uh, the first one's going to be Naoya Inoue. Um, before we get started, I have to ask you guys to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. We just passed 100, so um, the next goal will obviously be to 500 and then 1,000, etc., etc. Um, so anything helps. Um, Naoya Inoue is one of my favorite and most underrated fighters in the boxing world right now. I know uh, a lot of people have him pound for pound, top five, top three, or whatever, but uh, I don't. F I feel like not enough people know who he is. One or two, not know how good he is. Um, truthfully, I've only ever seen one fight of him. Um, it was the one that I went to out in Vegas uh, in June, I believe, June 16th or June 17th or whatever it was. But um, where he absolutely demolished Michael Desmarinas in three rounds with a, a liver shot. And um, just watching him fight, he's very, very tactical. He pushes the pace, but he's very tactical in the way he does it. Uh, he's always the aggressor. Uh, he uses like he utilizes his jab with that left hook to the body um he has a lethal right hand that he knocked jason maloney out with and jason maloney is a very very capable fighter um he really has a pretty decent resume considering he's only uh 21 and 0 with 18 knockouts um but let's get into his um into his, a little bit about him uh he's 28 years old so he's a little bit um up there in age he's not a young fighter 28 he's in his prime um, obviously I said 21 and 0 with 18 knockouts. He's an orthodox fighter. He's right-handed. He fights right-handed. Um, his height and his reach, he's 5'5 with a 67 and a half inch reach advantage. So he's a small guy. Um, obviously he fights in the, uh, Bantam weight class right now, which is 118. Um, his lowest weight was, um, was, uh, 108, which is light flyweight, I believe. Uh, he debuted in October 2nd in 2012, where he defeated, um, Kryson Amayo. Uh, who was 16-4-1 by knockout. So he started off his career with a KO. Um, as you can tell, he has a lot of power for someone of that size. Um, a lot of those smaller guys find it hard to knock people out because they don't have as much weight behind their punches as, say, a heavyweight would. But um, they really, he really dishes out good amounts of, of punishment with his punches. Uh, he just looks like he does it so effort, effortlessly, too. I never really thought that he was trying to to put someone down uh, or put Desmarinas down it didn't look like he was trying to knock him out yet he was he looked like he was still setting up his game plan but that that left hook to the body really is strong for him and he has a, a lethal right hand um some accomplishments he's a three division champ right now at 108 at light flyweight super flyweight and bantamweight he skipped um actual flyweight um he's a unified champ currently at 118 uh could possibly be undisputed he just needs two more belts um he says he has interest in in um going for undisputed um if he goes for undisputed i think he can really i think he beats uh john riel casimiro and i think he beats nodito denaire for the second time uh it should be interesting the way that goes and how soon that we see that being that casimiro has a fight coming up in august and um donaire is still available if he wants to go and, and take one of those straps away um, notable winners, uh, five and zero. He beat uh, Hernandez, a twenty nine two and one, for the WBC light flyweight championship. That was his first championship fight. Uh, he won it at five and zero. So uh, as you can see, he's one of those um, prototypical fighters like uh, Vasily Lomachenko, who had his first title fight uh, really early in his pro career. Uh, in a way, who was seven and zero against Narvaez, who was forty three one and two at WBO super flyweight. So his first super flyweight belt. Uh, like I said, he moved up two divisions. He didn't fight in flyweight. He made it look really, really easy. 15-0, uh, he fights Jamie McDonald for the WBA bantamweight, 29-2-1 uh, for McDonald. And he still holds that strap to this day. Uh, two fights later, he fought Rodriguez, who was 19-0 for the IBF bantamweight belt, which is also the, the second title that he holds right now as well. Um, the ceiling for him, I think that he could be a five-division champ. Um, that would mean he would have to fight and win championships up to 126. I think that is a, a realistic situation for him. Um, I don't. I know Stephen Fulton and uh, Brandon Figueroa are both very, very capable fighters on 122, but I don't think either one of the guys, those guys, has um, what it takes to beat in a way. 
I think his biggest challenges would be at 126 where you have never read Taste of the World and um, there's another guy at 126 as well. I can't think of his name right now, but um, never a Tay and there's a, I think there's four extremely talented champions at 126 that could all pose a threat to him being um, that he is a smaller fighter. Um, and who knows if his power will be able to carry it to 126. Um, I think his ceiling is five weight division champ. Um, I think that his highest weight class, as I said, will be at 126. Um, Tank Davis obviously is one that could say that um, you can make the argument for in a way that he could possibly be higher than 126, but Tank Davis is a naturally bulkier guy than in a way. In a way, is a little more slim. Um, Tank Davis is just a bigger. He's just probably about the same height, but he's bigger set, more muscular than in a way is, and has a lot more power. So his power carried up to 140. Um, so I think in a way's power should carry to 126 with no problem. Um, his last fight was the third round victory over Des Marinos at 32 and one, uh, which was a mandatory fight. But that's a pretty strong mandatory. Um, I know some of these mandatory fights could be very, very watered down or whatever, but that is a very, very strong mandatory right there. Um, a, a nice name to add to the resume as well. Uh, he's been knocked out before, but not that early. So um, he made it look real, real easy. Um, obviously, I said his next fights should be Casimiro or Donito Donaire for the second time. I would love to see both of those fights. Um, and that's going to do it for this video, guys. Um, if you guys have any fires that you would like to see me do something like this for, uh, feel free to drop a comment, leave a like, subscribe. If you guys would like to make a donation to the channel, it is No Hit Media on Cash App. Anything helps, and I will see you guys next time. That oh! shot right there. Down goes Maloney on a quick counter. As round seven. Oh, a big right hand.